the statue's secret. For as long as I can remember, New York City, with its towering skyscrapers and ceaseless energy, held a certain magic for me. But nothing was more captivating than the colossal Statue of Liberty. When I became a historian, my fascination turned into an obsession. I'd heard rumors about a hidden chamber inside the statue, untouched since its construction. Many dismissed these stories as urban myths, but I wasn't one to back down from a mystery. My research led me to an old diary from one of the workers who'd helped construct the statue. It cryptically alluded to Liberty's Heart, a space where the statue's creators left a message. The diary didn't explain what this message was, only that it was meant to be seen when the world was ready to understand. With a bit of persuasion and my credentials, I managed to get special permission to inspect the statue closely. One chilly evening, armed with the diary and a flashlight, I ventured inside Lady Liberty. The echoes of my footsteps were the only sound as I climbed the winding staircase leading to the crown. It wasn't long before I noticed a peculiar thing, a tiny latch just behind Lady Liberty's ear, just as the diary described. Taking a deep breath, I pushed it. Suddenly, a section of the inner wall slid open, revealing a dark passage. The diary's clues had been right. I ventured in, guided only by my flashlight. The corridor was tight, making me feel trapped between the cold metal walls. It ended in a circular chamber, at the center of which stood a pedestal with an old metal lantern, unlike the torch Lady Liberty held. Inscribed on the lantern were the words, Ignite me and you shall see. Hesitant, I lit the lantern. Its flame, strangely green, illuminated the room, casting eerie reflections on the walls. What I saw next made my heart race. The walls of the chamber were lined with mirrors, each reflecting a different scene. These weren't mere reflections. They were moving images like silent films. Scenes of war, peace, love, despair, and hope played out before me. I was transfixed by one image in particular. It was New York, but not the one I knew. The buildings were decimated, streets empty, the skyline dominated by dark clouds. The waters around Liberty Island were tumultuous, with ghostly ships looming in the mist. Suddenly behind me a voice whispered, Do you understand? I spun around to see a phantom-like figure, a woman draped in robes with a crown, bearing a striking resemblance to the statue itself. Who are you? I stammered. I am Liberty, she responded, her voice a hollow echo. These mirrors show what was, what is, and what may yet be. My creators wished for a world of peace and unity. The lantern's flame reveals the truth. Some realities are a result of actions while others can still be altered. My gaze returned to the apocalyptic New York in the mirror. Is this our future? I asked, terror gripping me. It is a path, she replied cryptically. Every choice, every action of mankind leads to a future. This chamber was built to remind us of the weight our choices carry. The torch I hold aloft is a beacon of hope, but this lantern, hidden in my heart, is a warning. I realized the enormous responsibility that came with this knowledge. What should I do? Share the truth, teach the world to choose hope over despair. But remember, the flame of this lantern is not eternal. Use its light wisely. As she spoke, the images began to fade and the chamber darkened. The last thing I saw was Lady Liberty's silhouette, and then I was alone, standing at the foot of the statue. The next morning, with the lantern in hand, I began my mission. Many dismissed my tale as the ramblings of an obsessed historian while others listened, captivated. I traveled, recounting what I'd seen and learned, hoping that the story of Liberty's heart would serve as both a caution and inspiration. While the world's fate remains uncertain, in the heart of New York stands a statue, a symbol of hope, and within her, a chamber that holds the reflection of our choices. Every day, as I look upon Lady Liberty, I am reminded of the world that was, is, and could be. The choice, as always, lies with us. The Subway Whisperer there are legends that exist nestled within the boroughs of New York. As someone who grew up in Brooklyn, I had always been a skeptic. But what I experienced on a cold winter night in 2023 altered my perspective forever. I am Jackson, a 28-year-old journalist for a local New York daily. 
Growing up, my grandmother would often regale me with tales of the city's specters and spirits. But there was one story she hesitated to share, the tale of the subway whisperer. It was only when she felt I was mature enough that she unraveled the tale. In the 1920s, New York's subway was expanding at an astonishing rate. Among the numerous workers was a young man named Harold. He was an immigrant trying to establish himself in this new world. A singer in his homeland, Harold would often serenade his colleagues with haunting melodies from his native land during their breaks. One fateful evening, while working on the tracks of an underground tunnel, a train unexpectedly barreled down upon them. Most managed to find refuge in the alcoves, but Harold, unfortunately, was not so lucky. The tragedy was promptly covered up, but soon after, workers and passengers alike reported hearing soft, melodic whispers echoing through the tunnels late at night. Those who heard the full song were never seen again. I had dismissed this as another urban legend, even laughed at it. But that changed the night I had to cover a late-night event in Manhattan. It was past midnight when I finally descended into the subway station to catch the last train to Brooklyn. The station was nearly empty, save for an elderly janitor and a homeless man sleeping on one of the benches. The overhead lights flickered sporadically, casting eerie shadows on the platform. The loudspeaker crackled to life, announcing the arrival of my train in five minutes. As I waited, I faintly heard a melodious whisper. The sound was soft, enchanting, pulling me towards the edge of the platform. I looked around, but the janitor was gone, and the homeless man remained asleep. The melody intensified, beckoning me closer to the dark abyss of the tunnel. Curiosity peaked, I cautiously peered down the tunnel, half expecting to see a busker. Instead, I saw nothing but the faint glow of distant lights. I was about to turn away when a chilling gust of wind blasted from the tunnel, and the lights went out. In the darkness, the melody grew louder, closer, accompanied by a soft voice singing in a language I couldn't understand. My heart raced as a dim, greenish glow began to emanate from the tunnel. From this glow emerged a translucent figure, a man in old-fashioned work clothes, singing as he walked towards me. It was Harold. Fear paralyzed me, and I couldn't move. The ghastly figure continued to approach, its mournful song filling the station. Just as Harold was a few steps away, the subway train roared into the station, lights blazing. The sudden illumination banished the apparition, and the haunting melody ceased. I stumbled into the train, gasping for breath, the doors closing behind me. As the train pulled away, I looked back at the station. There, on the platform, stood Harold, silently watching the departing train. The next day, I began researching the event. Digging through old newspapers and city records, I found a photo of Harold. The same face that had emerged from the subway's darkness stared back at me, cementing the reality of my experience. I also discovered that many had vanished over the years after hearing the full melody of the subway whisperer. They were usually alone, often at the same station I had been at. Today, I avoid the subway at all costs, especially late at night. I often wonder why I was spared when so many weren't. Maybe it was fate or luck, or perhaps Harold, in his eternal torment, occasionally allows a soul to escape his haunting serenade. So if you ever find yourself in a New York subway station late at night and hear a soft, enchanting whisper, do not seek its source. Turn away, leave the station, and pray you never hear the full song of the subway whisperer. For once you do, there may be no coming back. Legacy of the Towering Shadows I'd always been the black sheep of the family. While my relatives enjoyed extravagant lifestyles, I chose a more modest path. That's why when I received a letter stating I had inherited a high-rise condo in Manhattan from my eccentric Uncle Cornelius, I was taken aback. I hadn't seen him in years. He was known both for his incredible wealth and for his descent into madness in his later years. The building, named Corwin Towers, was an architectural marvel but years of neglect had turned it into an eyesore among the gleaming skyscrapers. Stepping inside, a grand but grimy chandelier loomed overhead, its light casting eerie patterns on the floors. My condo was on the topmost floor and the elevator journey was unsettlingly silent. Unlocking the door to the penthouse, I was met with a time capsule. Rooms filled with vintage furniture, walls adorned with haunting portraits, 
and large windows that offered a panoramic view of the city. At the center of the living room was a huge portrait of Uncle Cornelius, his intense eyes seeming to follow my every move. My first night was restless. The hum of the city was overtaken by the creaks and groans of the old building. Just as I was drifting to sleep, a blood-curdling scream echoed through the condo. Startled, I searched for the source but found nothing amiss. Morning brought a semblance of normalcy until I found a letter on the dining table, a letter I hadn't noticed before. The envelope was yellowed with age, and the handwriting was unmistakably Uncle Cornelius's. If you're reading this, it means I'm gone and the condo is yours. Beware the shadows of our ancestors. They've never really left Corwin Towers. Seek the truth in our family's history. Always watchful, Cornelius. The message was cryptic, but the mention of our ancestors intrigued me. I decided to delve deeper into the family history. Hidden in a dusty library room, I found journals documenting the Corwin lineage. My family was involved in occult practices, seeking wealth and power through dark rituals. Their ambitions had come at a cost as many met tragic ends. Night after night, strange phenomena occurred. Whispered conversations filled the hallways. Silhouettes darted past windows and sometimes reflections in the mirror weren't my own. The condo felt alive, watching and waiting. One evening, as a storm raged outside, the power went out. The only light came from the occasional lightning illuminating the city. In one such flash, I saw figures seated around the dining table. The same people from the portraits, but they looked so real. In the dim light, Uncle Cornelius stood, raising a toast to an empty chair. My chair. Horrified, I sought refuge in the library. Among the journals, I stumbled upon a family tree. At the very bottom, marked with today's date, was my name followed by the words, The Last Corwin. The realization was chilling. The penthouse wasn't just a home, it was a trap. Uncle Cornelius, in his madness, had believed that by offering me to our ancestors, he could appease their restless spirits and solidify his legacy. Desperate to escape, I rushed to the elevator. But it wouldn't budge, the ancestors, mere shadows, were closing in. Panicking, I remembered the large windows. Tying sheets together, I made an improvised rope. Just as I was about to climb down, a cold hand gripped my shoulder. Turning around, I was face to face with Uncle Cornelius. His spectral form whispered, You were always meant to be here, with us. Using all my strength, I broke free and climbed down. The wind howled and rain lashed, but the terror inside propelled me onward. Reaching the ground, I didn't look back. The next day, I sold Corwin Towers to a developer with plans to demolish it. As the wrecking ball brought down the haunted high-rise, I hoped it also buried the dark history of the Corwin family. But sometimes, on stormy nights in my new home, I still hear whispered conversations and wonder if the shadows of my ancestors continue to follow me.